This week, we are talking about how to raise your rates as a freelancer and still have plenty of clients. Are you ready? Let's go! What is up, self maders? So good to have you. So glad you're here. You know, we all start with small prices. We start we start out on the low end of things. And that's that's probably for good reason. After all, a lot of us are still working out the kinks of our processes. We're still learning all the skills we need to do to do a good job for our clients. But you shouldn't stay there. In fact, if it's been a while, you might want to think about upping those prices a little bit because you never want to stay stagnant. You always want to keep growing and the skills that you have, the rates that you charge, and, and the clients that you serve. So I'm going to be sharing some of my own journey with you and a few things that I did to raise my rates with confidence while still having enough projects to keep me plenty busy. But before we get started, I want to tell you about a free course that I have available at selfmadewebdesigner.com. And I am talking about the Web Designer Starter Kit course. And this four video course, I lay out every step that I took to go from knowing absolutely nothing about development and very little about design to going on to have a thriving freelance side hustle, and then on to have a full-time career in web design. Over 2,000 people have taken this course, and I know that it's going to help you. So go to selfmadewebdesigner.com and sign up for that course today. All right, are you ready to hear about four things that you can do to raise your rates as a freelancer? All right, let's do it. The first thing that you've got to make sure to do if you want to raise your rates as a freelancer, actually starts way before you start raising your rates, okay? And that is to give every job white glove treatment. So what do I mean by that? That means that you are treating every single job as if it were the highest paying job that you could ever imagine getting. My own journey to making good money while building websites for clients, it didn't start out awesome. And most folks don't start out that great anyway. In fact, for my first site, I, I didn't get any money at all. I got a whopping $100 gift card. And that was more than I had asked for, actually. I was, I was just trying to get one website, just one, to my name to start showing other people that I could actually do this stuff. I just wanted proof that I could be a web designer. So I didn't ask for anything from this client. So then for the next four websites, I averaged somewhere around $850 each. And the point is, all of this is that you have to start out somewhere. You can't come out of the gate expecting to make $10,000 Per site. It takes a while to build a good business. Brad Hussey, who's been a guest on this show and has been a mentor to me from afar for a long time, says this, good business is like a good barbecue. The longer it takes to cook, the better it tastes. If you want to make it for the long haul, you've got to be prepared to lay a good foundation for your freelancing web design business. And that's what those early projects are. They are laying the foundation for you to one day be able to raise your rates to a point where you're going, oh my gosh, I can't believe I am making this much money. My first really high paying client came from someone that hired me when I was first getting started as a web designer and I was working for nothing. I charged him less than half of what I charge now. And the story is it was a guy named Kyle Wei Lin who has since become a friend of mine. I actually interviewed him on the show as well. And he hired me to help with his personal site. And then he went on to get hired at a design firm that built websites for clients. Since I had done a good job on his site and since he knew that I did the same thing that they were doing and they needed some help, he suggested they hired me for this project and they did. But that all started with a job that I wasn't making nearly as much. And if I had treated that as me just putting in my dues and trying to make it until I had a bigger portfolio and kind of not caring very much, there's no way he would have referred me on to his new 
workplace. And the point is this, you've got to take everything seriously in the early days. There is no such thing as a small job. You never know when an opportunity will turn into another opportunity, but you'll never have the chance if you're not willing to start small and knock it out of the park, no matter how much you're getting paid. Okay. The second thing you need to do to raise your rates as a freelancer is this. Be prepared to increase your rates after every project. So my theory was this. If I was working on a project and someone else approached me about a new project during that time, I would quote them at least double what I was making on the current project that I was working on. After all, I didn't need the, the work right away. So if they said no, it wasn't a big deal. And I knew that I could get paid at least the same amount as I was getting from working on the current project that I had. I was confident that the rate that I had gotten the site, gotten the project for on the one that I was working on, I could do it again. So it wasn't a big risk to ask for double. And the cool thing was people said yes. And I kept asking for more after every project. And they kept saying yes. Now, here's what happens because you don't have the ability to infinitely increase your prices. Like there's, there's a cap. And eventually it capped off for me as well. Potential clients started saying no a lot more times than they said yes. And when that happens, your gut reaction is to lower your prices again. And to be honest, that's what I did, just, just a tiny bit. But I would learn later that a better response is point number three, add more value to your clients. It's pretty simple. If a client feels like they're getting more from you than they are giving to you, they will most likely hire you. Isn't that the same thing with the stuff that we buy? When we feel like the value of having something is worth more than the value of what it takes to give something away, then it's a no-brainer. We're going to give away $2 for that really good hamburger, right? And so it's the same thing when it comes to clients and your services as a web designer. There are two ways to add more value to clients so that you can continue to raise your rates. The first one is by communicating your value better. And the second one is by increasing the value that you actually add. If you can't communicate the value you're actually adding to a client, then it doesn't matter how much you're actually adding. It's going to be tough to get projects from anyone. You might be the best WordPress freelancer who's ever existed. But if you're unable to convince anyone of that, then good luck. And a lot of freelance web designers I talk to have this problem. They have a problem of really being able to communicate their value in such a way that the client goes, this is a no brainer for me. Of course, I'm going to pay you this much money. One of the keys to my success early on was being able to tie what I was doing back to the client's success. And that's not as simple as you might think. Not every client will be motivated by money. And then again, some clients, that's all they're going to be motivated by. But the only way of knowing what client you have and what they're motivated by is by asking them. So start out each project with a fact-finding session. Ask them questions like, what does success look like for this website redesign or first-time build? Or you could ask them, if your website could only do one thing for you, what would it be? You're trying to get to the heart of the matter. You're trying to get to the motivations that they have for hiring you in the first place. So then once you have a good idea of what they're truly hoping to get out of the project, think about ways that you can connect the dots between what you do and what they are actually looking to accomplish. For instance, if you have a client that is hoping to make more sales from a redesign, Tell them how research has shown that people are more likely to purchase from sites that are more aesthetically pleasing. Then highlight your design skills. See how you're tying the value that they're looking to add to their website with what you're able to give them. But doing this, it's not even creating more work for you. It's just you communicating more clearly about what it is, the service that you're actually providing to the client and just how valuable that is. So once you've learned how to communicate better, it's time to start actually thinking about 
adding more value. So how you do this will depend a lot on your preference, but here are a few ideas. You could do things like adding branding and messaging along with your full package. You could focus on optimizing their SEO. You could dig into conversion rate optimization a little bit or track Google Analytics goals to see how well their site is performing. You could add security or site speed features with like a paid plugin that you pay once a year and then you just put it on all of your clients' sites. There's a number of things that you can do to add value that are relatively easy to implement and don't take up a lot more time as a freelancer. You don't necessarily have to go and learn an entirely new skill set, but you do have to think in terms of adding more to the overall package of what you do. So we're treating every project as if it were the best project we've ever gotten before. We're treating it with white glove care. We're raising our rates after each project. We're adding more value. And then number four, we're giving your clients a wow moment. In the book, The Power of Moments, Dan and Chip Heath explain that if you really want to leave a lasting impression on a customer, you have to do something unexpected. None of us are floored when we go to McDonald's, order a burger, pay for it, and then get one three minutes later, right? That's what should happen. You don't walk away raving about how you got exactly what you ordered. And you're definitely not texting your friends, encouraging them to go to that same McDonald's to have their very low expectations met as well. The same is true for the freelance clients that you're serving. Doing what you said you would do for the price you asked within the time frame that you agreed are the basics. That is baseline. If you want to have clients that can't stop talking about what you did for them, then you have to do something unexpected. Kyle didn't suggest his design firm hire me because I did okay. That's not a really great selling point, right? You should hire Chris. He does okay. I, I like if you told me that I'd be like that you're not you haven't convinced me. Let's find somebody else who does more than OK. No, Kyle was impressed by what I had done for him. So he referred me to his firm and giving your clients a wow moment. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to work an extra 40 hours on the project. It could be something simple like sending them a thank you note. I once did that for a client. Three days later, he called me and told me he had been doing business for 15 years and had never once gotten a thank you card from anyone. The next thing he said, I've got another job for you. So what can you do to create an unexpected wow moment for your clients? Do you send them a bottle of whiskey on the day that they launch their site? What about adding a feature that they didn't ask for and not charging them? And listen, I know there are tons of people out there that will almost militantly say, not, don't do anything for free, right? Like you are worth more than what these people are paying you, you know, kind of like a drill sergeant. And, and, and listen, maybe that works for them, but I don't know, to me, that's just not good business. I don't like the idea of everything being so transactional. And if I'm the one that has to suffer a bit at the end of it, so be it. But honestly, in all the years I've been freelancing as a web designer, I've never lacked for business. So I can't imagine that my me being willing to go above and beyond, I'm doing something wrong. So why not go the extra mile and do something above and beyond for your clients? It'll come back to you eventually. You know, the truth is, is it takes time to raise your rates as a freelancer, but it is doable and probably more doable than you imagined it to be. And, and I, I have a feeling that there are some of you out there who need to go right now in the next project that you bid on, you need to bid double of what you would normally charge because you're there, my friend. You've got the value. You're able to communicate. You've done a good job laying the foundation and now you just need to do it. But if that's not you and, and you're just getting started, I, I wanna encourage you that even though it feels like you've got a mountain to climb, Everyone starts there. We start at the bottom of the food chain, but don't be afraid to build websites for less money than you hope to make one day. Consider it investing into your future. You're not gonna have to stay there for forever, but 
you have to start somewhere. Then once you get a little momentum, it's time to start increasing your rates. Start going up by 10%, 20%. Start doubling your rates after every project. The worst thing that could happen is that you keep getting paid the rate that you've already proved that you can get from the last project that you had. And if for some reason you find yourself getting capped at a certain level and you can't really increase your rate anymore, it's, it's time to start adding value to what you're doing. And you can do that by simply learning how to communicate better to clients or by actually finding some ways to add value. And then lastly, leave your customers floored by the unexpected things that you do to go above and beyond. It's not rocket science, and it certainly isn't impossible. If you find yourself getting stuck at a price point, keep trying out different methods. Make slight adjustments here and there until you figure it out, because trust me, if I can do it, you can too. I hope that this episode was an encouragement to you if you've been considering raising your rates or wondering how you should go about doing it. This is a great framework for you. But at the end of the day, I want to encourage you to stay patient. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of persistence. And this journey that you're on to become a successful freelancer, a successful web designer, web developer, UX designer, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, you're going to hit some resistance. You're going to hit some bumps in the road. But the things that set you apart from the folks that don't keep going is that you're going to stick with it. You're going to figure out a way through it. And I am here with you the entire step of the way. Well, next week, we've got another awesome episode coming at you. Something great. I know it will be. I hope you're staying up with me to listen. Wednesday night, midnight, my time, which is Mountain Standard Time, which is kind of funny because Arizona decided to make things difficult and not have any kind of daylight savings in their timing, which has been very frustrating for me and all of the clients that I've worked with who are in different parts of the world. But that's for another episode. Until then, keep on going, keep working hard, keep raising those rates, and don't forget, if you don't quit, you win. <laughs> <laughs>